studio. Biden says he wants to show unifying. He wants to unify the country. And yet what he's putting forward is one of the most divisive, partisan, rancorous, bitterest things that you could possibly do. And if Biden had been a statesman, he could have stepped up a week or two ago and said, you know, I think, you know, he's being published by public opinion, former President Trump, and I think we should not do the impeachment. It won't be good for the country. You know what? Biden's numbers would have shot up 20 points and people would say, oh, my goodness, for once, somebody that can rise against partisanship. Nah, that's not Joe Biden's MO, though. He much prefers to go out and talk about how we are racist and, you know, we don't look out for one another and we need to get back to being decent again. Speaking of decency, I've got a great reporter joining me now, the political reporter for the Tennessee Star, Neil McCabe. He's a friend of the show. Neil, I thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, really glad to be with you, Grace. So, Neil, break this down for everybody. What Republicans do you think are turning on Trump, and what are what's at risk here for them politically? Well, you know, we're, we saw it in the Senate where uh, forty-five Republicans voted uh, with Rand Paul, and uh, you know, you know, the, the clip that you just played was Rand Paul sort of talking about, you know, just the absurdity of uh, Democrats uh, accusing Trump of inciting violence when, you know, they spent six months burning every city in the country. The, so when you have, so you're out of 50, so that's, what, so five, five Republicans, so that's 10%, so 90% of Republican senators are still with Trump after everything that's been said about him. And that's because they recognize that Trump is popular with their voters, and they will pay a price. And so politicians will always pick the coward's choice. And so right now, the coward's choice for these Republicans is to back Trump because they don't want to return to private life. And we saw an even uh, greater example on the House side where you had 10 out of uh, you know 200 plus uh, Republicans voting to impeach Trump. 10 is a big number, but it's not 20. It's not 30. <laughs> So, and that's like 5% of Republicans. And I think the ones who are really going to pay are, uh, you know, the leadership types like Liz Cheney, uh, who I interviewed her challenger in Wyoming. And, you know, he's getting money from all over the country. He's getting calls from all over the country. People are making it a cause celeb to take down Liz Cheney because she's number three in the House Republican leadership. And every single Democrat who was talking about you know, this impeachment, this flash impeachment was quoting the number three leader of the Republican Party in the House. Yeah, she was part of a brave few Republicans who decided to turn on Trump. I Now, Neil, do you think she, in my mind, she saw this playing out very differently. She thought she was going to be a hero. <laughs> and I think that a lot of these people, these rhinos, are surprised at just how much the party has changed. It's no longer the party that wants, you know, that that wants um, that strange new respect from the Washington Post. People don't care anymore. Right. I think that, uh, you know, from like the way I peg it is, you know, from from 68 to 2000. So the Republicans were operating in sort of like a Nixon Reagan paradigm. But Obama changed all the rules. And, you know, this is why Republicans were so useless against Obama because they had no idea that the rules had changed. So Trump is sort of the Republican answer to Obama in the new paradigm. And you still have these like stragglers who haven't caught up yet. Liz Cheney, I think she assumed that uh, she could use this to catapult her into a leadership challenge against Kevin McCarthy. Nobody's really happy with Kevin McCarthy as the House leader for the Republicans, but no faction has enough votes to topple him. And so they just sort of leave him there as this placeholder. But Liz Cheney was making a gambit, I believe, uh, for, for leadership. And also, you know, there's this creeping suburbs of Denver that are uh, now in <laughs> this is sort of like growing, you know, the way that uh, – the Massachusetts, the Massachusetts people moved to New Hampshire because they loved the freedom of New Hampshire, and then they turned it into, like, a purple state. That's what's happening to Wyoming. The Denver uh, suburbs are growing, and she's pulling money and support from those people in Colorado. So there are different 
there are different dynamics in play, but let's not forget, Trump won Wyoming by 70, with 70 percent of the vote. Why would you vote to impeach that guy? It right. doesn't even make political sense. No, and none of this. And Rand Paul really laid out today, Neil, I'm talking to Neil McCabe. You guys have probably heard him on the show before. Rand Paul laid out yesterday and today why this doesn't make sense even from a standpoint of even if he had done what they're accusing him of, which he he didn't. He didn't incite the insurrection. It's it's now being said that it was pre-planned. But even if he had, he's no longer the president. So just from a strategic standpoint, this makes zero sense. Right. There was a case of a secretary of war named Belknap who was impeached after he left office. Uh, you know, so there's sort of these, the theoretical thing is, hey, we impeach the guy and we just and because we are impeaching him, we can stop him from ever holding federal office again. We can strip him of his Secret Service protection. But, you know, if you're going to play that game, then why isn't the chief justice? Uh, presiding over the impeachment. And then I didn't even know a chief justice was allowed to say, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so like, you know, like a year ago, what if Robert, chief John Roberts had just said, I'm not going to do it. Like, what do you do? Does everything come to a stop? It, the whole thing is kind of bogus. And the Democrats are sort of stuck with it. And I think that they're being fed by this, uh, this sort of cadre of, uh, of leftist reporters who are telling them how great they're doing and how wonderful it is. And uh, it's really going to hurt them because if you're Joe Biden, why do you want to start your first hundred days and everybody's still talking about Trump? No, exactly. Unless that's what exactly what you want. You don't want people talking about you. But Neil, my next question for you is about Biden. So Neil's on Twitter and you guys should definitely follow him because I like what you do, Neil. You you retweet a lot of people, not necessarily that you agree with, but you just kind of keep up with what's going on. It's at Neil W. McCabe, too. Do I have that right? Yes, that's correct. So people should definitely follow you. And I, and I noticed that you've been keeping up with a lot of the things that Biden has been up to in the last couple of days. He's managed to do a lot of damage in a short amount of time, whether it's the Keystone Pipeline or um, climate initiatives or, you know, kind of backing the, the teachers unions that are on strike. What, what do you think uh, as far as his first few blunders? What's the biggest one thus far? Well, I think the, the one that's really going to hurt people is is his decision to gut the office in the Department of Homeland Security, which is supposed to protect American jobs. And so he made this big deal out of signing an executive order to buy American. And, you know, Trump signed, you know, basically the same thing. And, you know, the, but there was no enforcement of it. Now, I doubt there's going to be any enforcement of this executive order. But, you know, protecting American jobs is so vital when you consider that so many Biden supporters owe tens of thousands of dollars in college loans, and those are the jobs where you know the corporate America is saying we can't afford to to pay these kids enough so that they can make their loan payments, so we have to import these uh, workers from India and China, and Biden is all in on that. You know that's why we saw for the first time in twenty years. We saw real wages went up under Trump because he was cutting back that supply of foreign workers. Well, Biden's going to open that spigot up again, and it's going to gut the uh, those young people who like sort of followed him, like the Pied Piper. Right, right. And my next question, Neil, has to be: There is a report out today that you might one mask might not be good enough, and two masks might be okay, but triple masks are really where the future's at. Are you wearing three masks, Neil? Uh, just between you and me, I've always been sort of a one-mask guy, <laughs> and uh, that took a lot. That took a lot, because I try to be as libertarian as possible without... I want to be as libertarian as I can without putting my soul in jeopardy. And so for me to even become mask guy, that was a lot. It wasn't as bad as it took me a while to, like, use seatbelts, not because of safety, but just because I didn't want to be told what to do. Yeah. <laughs> but then I said, all right. So I became seatbelt guy. Um, you know, I started when they started banning smoking in the bars in Massachusetts, I just started smoking just to be in solidarity with them. But, you know, that obviously has health <laughs> ramifications. So I had to stop that. Um, 
but yeah, I'm uh, I'm a one mask guy, and I and I hope you don't hold it against me. I, I won't, Neil. And my, my last question for you is: I know you follow the press like I do. Uh, we we knew there was going to be massive double standards with Joe Biden. I did not know it was going to be this. Uh. Obvious. I mean, it's it's painfully blatant how much they just are in the bag for Joe Biden. But I, I wanted to know, Neil, did you see this whole back and forth between Glenn Kessler on Twitter with Stephen Miller? He basically said they're not going to be fact checking Joe Biden and then they're not going to keep a database to fact check Joe Biden. And then, you know, Stephen Miller brought up the fact that the fracking situation would be a great fact check because he said he wasn't going to ban fracking. And he is. And Glenn Kessler said, you know, that's not true. So have you been following any of this? Well Kessler, well, Kessler is the guy who's supposed to be, you know, Mr. Pinocchio's at the Washington Post. Right. And he's the guy who's always calling everyone out. But these fact checkers, most of the fact checkers are backed by some kind of Soros organization anyway. The fact checking is, is just absurd to begin with. But sure, I mean, look at look at how they're so docile. They're like trained SEALs. At the White House, uh, you know, briefing, you know, I didn't like what the press did to Sean Spicer. You know, I thought it was rude and disrespectful, but I tuned in like every day. Like that's the first time in my life I ever set the alarm so I wouldn't miss a White House briefing. And it's like that was entertainment anyway. But, you know, we're going back to these boring briefings again. And then. Biden doesn't even call on the reporters, and the reporters have their questions already lined up. It's like something you'd see in, in like, uh, the Chicoms doing in Red China. Yeah. No, no, I know. And and I was just going to say to you, you can delete that alarm now. You don't have to set that anymore because they are definitely going back to <laughs> being very boring. Neil McCabe, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people read your stuff? Yeah, go to the Tennessee Star and uh, the other Star, uh, Star outlets. But the Tennessee Star is the flagship of the Star News Network. And obviously, I'd love people to follow me at Neil W. McCabe, too, on the Twitter. He's a great follow, guys. He keeps up with everyone. Thank you so much, Neil McCabe. Guys, my friends at Eden Pure have done it again. And just for this week, the Thunderstorm air purifier, which I'm holding in my hand, the BOGO deal is back. That's buy one, get one. So you buy one Thunderstorm air purifier and you get another one for free. It's been months and people still ask me if it really works. I know Jared gets that a lot too. That's like one of our number one questions is does the air purifier actually work? It does. It smells. It doesn't smell actually is is the best way to describe it. There's an absence of odor when the air gets ionized by the thunderstorm. It's perfect. It, It really is. And whether you have dogs or tobacco smells, whatever it is, tough smells, this thing works on if it's you know the damp basement whatever it is you really can't count on this not only does it really work but it works in hours our sales rep uh, went down to palm beach she was staying in an airbnb it was a little bit funky the smell the mail manager brought her over one of these and she was totally fine the eden pure air purifier is so small that's why i can hold it in my hand right now it's you know no bigger than really a, a charger um, and you can plug it right into the wall. You can move it around, too, if you have one room and then you decide, oh, I'm going to move it down the basement. It's very portable. There's no air filters, so you don't have to spend more money on it once you buy it. And you don't have to spend more time on it. You can be lazy about it. BOGO is back for one week. Maybe you have one and you know how well it works. Now you may want one for your second floor or for your basement. Or maybe you want to buy one for your friend. Maybe your friend hears this and you know says, ah, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Get it for them. And then you'll get one. You can give them one as a gift. And it works great. Go to EdenPure.com, put in code word GRACEBOGO. This deal ends on January 31st at midnight. The thunderstorm sells fast, so don't delay. Shipping is free. We will be back with, you know what, we'll, we'll take some calls. 844-500-4242. We do have a lot of sound to get to, but the callers have been great today, so we'll open up the lines. We'll be right back. This is The Grace Curley Show. You're listening to The Grace Curley Show. 